God bless you for being here today. You ought to shout hallelujah. When you got up this morning, you ought to say good morning, Holy Ghost. We're going to have a wonderful day. How many are going to have a wonderful day today? Come on now. You say, well, I'm waiting to see if we're going to have one. You'll never wait. you wait to see to have one. Faith is never do anything until it's in motion. Faith has to be in motion. Your life has to be in motion. I want to share some things with us today about the good things of God. Why don't you turn to the book of Luke, the 11th chapter, please. Appreciate every one of you being here today. Appreciate it. Glory to God. I'm excited about the Lord. I'm so excited about life and living. Okay, are you there? All right, Luke 11th chapter, verse 9 through 13. I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, knock is a, really getting violent when you knock. And it shall be given unto you. Verse 10. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. To him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask for bread of any of you, and that is the father will give him a serpent or a stone, verse 12, it shall be given to you. Let me just jump on down to verse 13. If you then be an evil, knowing how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit is to them that ask him. Make it your number one asking with God, seeking and knocking to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to overflow in abundance. We're going to title this. We titled it when tonight, but we're going to use the same title, Revival Until Jesus Comes. I'm a person who do not believe that God is about to do anything. I don't believe that. I'm just going to be honest but with the heart. I believe. I believe he's a doing it. I believe it's happening worldwide. We need a worldwide revival to happen right now. Faith is when? Now. 63,000 people. Veterans took their lives since 2010. Can't cope with life and all of that thing. God bless them. Why don't you say, God bless them? Oh, how this world needs a revival and the church needs a revival. By the grace of God, I'm going to preach revival until he comes. Until there's no more life left in me. Not going to look at things as it is. I'm going to call it the way it should be. Everything that's visible is subject to the invisible, supernatural power of God. He's supernatural. He's no respecter of person. God gives the Holy Spirit to those that ask. I read this week in the commentary, abundant life is not materialistic things. Abundant life is a hungry and thirsty for more of God. You ought to shout hallelujah. We all need more of God. He has more available for us. It's been said and written, man has not seen what God will do through a person that's totally surrendered to him. To be totally surrendered to God and the wonderful things of God. Ask Desire a deeper, a deeper and more abundant relationship with God himself. I want to encourage you every morning you get up. My daddy used to tell us anytime you can get up and put both feet on the floor, you know it's going to be a good day. You ought not to never get up and say, good Lord, it's morning. You ought to say, good God, I'm thankful to be here. Amen. Come on now, church. God wants us to be alive. We can't expect the world to be alive if we're not alive. 
We are the light of the world, and we are the salt of the earth. Brother Melvin and I was up here praying this morning. I, I, Brother Ken mentioned something about him, but he ain't years as old as we are. We got where well, we just hard to sit down, right? We're walking in the prayer, and we just give out. Amen. But thank God we still sit down and pray. You don't have to stand up to pray. There's a lot of tradition in the church. It's tradition. It's not biblical. You don't have to stand up to pray. That's traditional. That's feelings. You can pray laying down. You can pray driving down the road. Amen. R.W. Schambach would listen to A.A. A. Allen pray one time. He said, everybody close your eyes while I pray for this child. He said, I've never seen a child so crippled in all my life. He said, everybody close your eyes. Now I'm going to pray for him. He said, I told the Lord I am not closing my eyes. And watch this man do that because it said, watch and pray. <laughs> I'm going to we go to watch and pray sometime. The blessings of God. Y'all feel good today? I feel good in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 15 and 15 said, A merry heart is like a continuous feast. God wants you to have a continuous feast, and he gives you joy unspeakable and full of glory. The more you have a joyful life, greater the spiritual walk is going to be. I won't go into this tonight, this morning, but it'll affect your flesh. Every negative thought you say, think, affects your flesh and affects your relationship with God. He's given us a good testimony, the good things of God. Hebrews 7 and 3 said, made like unto the Son of God. How many believe that you are made like the Son of God? You're fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and the likeness of God. Hebrew says that, confirming it there. And he said, abideth a priest continuously. I really don't believe that you need to pray for the Holy Spirit to come. I believe he's here. I believe that. It says right there, continuous priest to come. If Christ is in us, the healer is inside of us. The chief physician is inside you. Amen? And, Lord, I know a lot of you need a healing. Amen? We all need to declare right now, I'm going to my grave in a good old age and full of good health. That's the living word of God. Peggy and I, you know, I've been down <laughs> But I, I'm thanking God I was down because I tell you, the Lord began to speak to me some things. And I know Peggy needs some healing. I won't go no further than that. But she and I talk about this. We are both planning on going to our grave in a good old age and feel a good health. Come on now. Elisha asked for a double portion. Elijah said you're asking for a hard thing, but nevertheless, if you see me when I go away, you shall get it. Elisha died as an old man. They threw him in the grave. And they came along, Brother Clayton, another man had died, and they didn't have time to bury him. Said, we'll just throw him in there on top of him and get two for one. And as soon as that dead body hit that dead body of Elisha, the power of God that was in him rushed out of him under that dead body and he jumped up out of that grave. How many got the Spirit of God in your life? Thank you. Thank you. You have the power of God in your life. I am tired of routine. <laughs> I want to see something different. I remember Leo Garrison preached a message one time. He said, Linnell, I'm tired of this routine business. We're going to swap sides of the bed tonight. <laughs> I don't know whether that would make any difference or not, but I tell you, we need to get out of a routine, a rut, and get in a routine with God and believe God is going to work a miracle in my life every day of my life as long as I'm here on this earth. That's the plan of God. Acts 2 to Acts 28 is 33 years. 33 years they had a continuous revival, adding to the church daily. 
Bible commentary said for the next 300 years, there was nothing but 300 years of revival. I, can't, I hadn't figured up how old I would be in the next 30 years or whatever. I don't really think I'll be here, but you know it's possible. I believe God wants us to have a revival in our lives every day of our lives. I believe he wants us to be on a fire for God. We're the light of the world and we're the salt of the earth. That's what we are. Hebrews 7, 24, he lives on forever. You say, when's he going to pull out the Holy Ghost? 2,000 years ago in the book of Acts, and he's still pouring it out today. Brother Plum made this testimony one time. Used to be some signs on the street down there. Y'all remember Uncle Sam? You know, he's all, y'all, you know, Sister Linda, you, you old enough to remember that. I'm not telling on you. You remember seeing that? I seen him on the streets of Atlanta, Uncle Sam, all dressed up, pointing his finger out and said, I want you. Brother Plum said he walked by that sign one day and stood there watching out and said he, he wasn't a Christian. Hallelujah. I'm going to slow down. I'm too excited. God speaks to unbelievers just like he speaks to Christians. If he didn't, they never would get saved. He said, I stand there looking at him and said, Jesus spoke to me and said, Cooper, I want you. How many believe that God wants you? He came to church, got the Holy Ghost, got baptized. And when the Spirit of the Lord was moving sometime, he would bunny hop, both legs tied together. He just hop all over the place. Y'all remember that? And Sister Plum gets the Holy. She got the Holy Ghost, so full of the Holy Ghost when the Spirit of the Lord was moving, she'd do the Charleston. She'd dance and do the Charleston. I don't know where she learned that at, but I'm gonna tell you, God can bring forth the power of God and change your life just like that. The visible is subject to the supernatural power of God. Is subject to it. Change their life forever. I've been changed. I've been newborn. The wonderful things of God. How many feel blessed? I mean blessed, really blessed. The power of God. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ never changes. Number said there shall be a continuous bread shall be there continue for you all the time Jesus is the bread of life if you miss reading your Bible today during the day if you miss reading it you missing the bread of life to get in your life Ken done a wonderful job this old man is perishing day by day but the new man is what? Renewed how often? Daily. You, you, you got to re- and the only way you can renew him is by the Word of God. If you have the Holy Ghost, you need to pray in the Spirit daily because it stirs up your most holy faith. I know I've told you this before, but Sister Linda wants to hear it again. Peggy was going to teach Melvin and... Ed Parker had to sing. <laughs> that is funny, isn't it? I tell you, come on, you ought to laugh. Laughter is like medicine. I'm, I'm telling you to do something for you. One day at the piano at the house, she says, I give up. We quit. This is end of the training. End of the training. But I don't know what it was, Brother Melvin. When I walked through this church up this morning and you came in here, I just walked around a singing. I don't know what I was singing, but I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord will put a song in your heart, a song in your life. I've mentioned this I don't know how many times. Brother Frank Young was known at the work singing Frank, working on that old rough equipment, but he was a singing. Listen, we ought to have a song in our heart because the chief physician lives inside of us. The one that has all power and authority in heaven and earth lives inside of us. It's going to happen right here like we've never seen before. On a fashion we've never seen before. You say, Brother Bill, how do you know that? I'm saying what God says. Ken mentioned this morning. I've been teaching a Sunday school class the last 
about 40 days, a 40-day word fast. Huh? You know, speak no negative word in your life. Train yourself to speak nothing but what God says. And God lives inside of us. He's not about to get in you. He's already in you. If you've been born again, he's in you. New life, new hope, new burning desires. Revival until when? Till Jesus comes. Revival. I was glad when they said unto me, Sister Ruth said last Sunday morning back there on the Baptist pew, I was glad to come to the house of the Lord today. That's the best place in the world you can go to the house of the Lord. And I'm not talking about just right here. You can have the house of the Lord in your house. You can have the house of the Lord in your. Brother James McCaskin testified at one time. He said, I don't know how many times when he left work in Texas County, he never remembered how he got home. He's so caught up in the Spirit, singing and worshiping, praising God. The last few years of his life, he came to church, couldn't hear. Sit right back there, couldn't hear. Didn't hear one word going on, but he sat there. But I tell you, it's not all about hearing. It's about what your spirit is feeling. Your inward spirit feeling and pulling that into your life. He died in his 90s. How many know that God is good? When? When you're really down and out, as Brother Eddie used to say, you can't hardly reach up and touch the bottom of your boot. He's still a good God. He's good regardless. He can take the worst evil thing happening in your life and turn it around and make it the best thing in your life. Praise God. I've never seen a machine like Jonathan Belt brought up here the other day. I think he barred that. Is that right? That thing had them old teeth out there like that, and they called it a thumb, reached on there like that, and I was watching that thing. It was amazing. He pulled up every one of them things just, just, like, just like that. Almost pulled that tree up down there. We found out it was the blessings of the Lord upon us to take that shrub out. There's roots about that big growing under some of them shrub out there under this foundation. Took a saw to cut it off. We didn't know that, but we know it's going to break the foundation. But I want you to know you got something in your heart, something in your life cannot destroy the foundation you're built upon. That's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everybody ought to get excited when you hear about Jesus. He has all power in heaven and earth, and he lives inside of you, right? He's living inside of you. When the woman said to herself, I've spent all my money. Can't nobody help me. I'm broke. But if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I don't know how old she was, but she began to decree. Job said, decree a thing, and it shall happen to you. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I shall be made whole. But Jesus is in a large crowd. But immediately she touched the hem of his garment. Virtue, power rushed out of that body because that body was full of the power of the Holy Ghost. How many got the Holy Ghost? You don't have to raise your hand. Thank you, brother. Thank you. We ought to be living in a way that somebody touch us, they get healed. Now, now you say, well, that was Jesus. When Jesus went away, he sent the Holy Ghost back, the same Holy Ghost that got him out of the grave. He came down and got in us. Ooh, hallelujah. How many are glad for the Spirit of God? He's the chief physician. He's the chief counselor. Hallelujah. Praise God. I told Brother Ken I wasn't going to mention much about this. I had this message last week, I guess it was, and I didn't read my Sunday school lesson at the beginning somewhere along the week. And I didn't know that Mephibosheth was mentioned in the Sunday school lesson. But I want to just share something with you. 
He ate at the king's table the rest of his life. Y'all got that? David said, now, I can't pronounce the man, name, but Ken can. He looked at him and said, now, I want you to go get all the land that Jonathan owned, every servant that he had. I want you to get them all together, and you're going to work all the land that belonged to Jonathan or Saul. And I want you to work it for him. But Mephibosheth is not going to do no work. You ought to shout hallelujah. We're too busy working ourselves trying to work the plan of God. But David said he's going to sit at the king's table the rest of his life. He's not going to have to eat off the fruit that he makes. He's going to eat off the fruit that I'm going to give him. Come on now, church. God wants you to have the fruit from heaven that he and only he alone can give you, and that's the supernatural power of the living God that lives inside of us. I'm looking for some of you to get so anointed. People walk by, they're going to turn around and look, what in the world? Got, what, what, what's going on? Mr. Jake Hyman said, I always wanted to live to go to Germany. I wanted to eat some of that, what, Lumberger cheese and drink that black, young, black German beer. That was his desire. I heard him say that many times. They claim you could smell them as far off as you could see them after they'd ate that stuff. There's a light inside of us. We're the light of the world and we're the salt of the earth. The chief physician is living inside of us. He's a counselor. He's a mighty God. Don't cast away your confidence. Hmm? Paul said in Acts 28, said, now listen, this ship's going to go down. They done lighten the load, threw everything overboard. They threw everything overboard. He said, but the ship's going to go down. Everything going to be lost, but your life's not going to be lost. He said, all that can swim is going to swim to shore. And if you can't swim to shore, you get a plank and get to shore. He talked to them, Sister Peggy, in such confidence. He said, now let's go have a meal. Now I want you to think about that. How can you go have a meal and sit down and eat a meal? How many could go sit down and eat knowing that ship fixing to go down? But he had spoke such confidence in him. Paul had not cast away his confidence. He said, I believe God. So the angel stood and told me, hallelujah. I want you to know that you have an angel around you. We need to learn to listen to the angel that's talking to us. Angel talked to the, every church in the book of Revelation. He says, I believe God. We're all going to be saved. He didn't cast away his confidence. He didn't lose his confidence in God. They all ate a meal, and first thing you know, the ship was going down, and the good swim. They swam ashore, and the one couldn't swim, got a plank, and got to shore. Praise God. Philip was a Greek. He was not one of the 12. He served tables. Listen, if that's all you can do to serve tables, if you start serving tables, I guarantee you God promotes you to something greater. He'll grow that seed. No Jew would go down there, right, Brother Clayton? I know you understand this. No Jew would go down to Samaria. Even the Jews, after they got the Holy Ghost, you think we got problems. I'll tell you, they had problems too. Them Jews were not going to accept them Gentiles. Jesus said, go back to Jerusalem, preach the gospel, then go to Judea, then go to Samaria. They didn't do it. They stayed at Jerusalem. That's why he had to send great persecution into Jerusalem to force them out because they was not planning on going to Samaria because them Gentiles lived down there. But God had raised him up a man, Acts 6, full of the Holy Ghost and full of power and full of faith. He goes down to Samaria and preach Christ. Everybody ought to shout Christ. Come on now, you ought to shout Christ. If you want your life to change, start speaking Christ. Start speaking the Word of God. When you don't feel like it, speak it anyhow. I guarantee you something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. We get this book on the mortars. 
It's amazing what goes on in here. Many difficulties will come into your life, but they won't matter. What matters is are we seeking Christ's faith? Then it goes on down and it says, we were worried about our future. Our families and our circumstances were very difficult. I can't pronounce those names. But when we read the Bible, ooh, hallelujah, we were not worried anymore. The Bible is the living Word of God. Proverbs 4.20 said, It's not only that, it's health to your flesh. When you read the Word of God, you're putting health in your flesh. So he goes down there and he preached Christ. He baptized that whole city. That whole city. Wouldn't it be wonderful? I mean, isn't it going to be wonderful when this whole area gets baptized? And then the Bible says, everyone in that city was healed. Everyone. But this Greek, he's no respect to person. He's the same yesterday to ever. I'm looking forward for anybody that comes in this church, in this city. We got that sign up down there. I just got so excited. One city under what? I mean, you know, we all want God to move so miraculously that everybody gets healed in this city. Come on now. You say, Brother Billy, that's a big thing. Is anything too hard for God? The king knew Elisha was about to die, so he sent, and he sent for him to come and see him. And Elisha more or less said, what can I do for you? They had a little conversation. Elisha said, take your arrow and do what? Well, what do you tell him to take his arrow and do? Do what? Somebody said out loud. And strike the ground. That king says, The Bible said Elisha come very angry, very wroth. He, 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 got, he, just, he just got wroth because he was a man that knew what it meant, Brother Don, to ask for greater things. He asked for a double portion. He looked at that king said, if that's all the victories, you're going to get three. That's all you're going to get because you didn't show no more enthusiasm. If you struck it five to six times, that's how much you get. I want you to start asking God for great and mighty things. Ask for your friend. Ask for this community. Ask and you shall what? Ask for the Spirit of God and its anointing in your life to increase. But none of them had got the Holy Ghost. There was a man in that town practiced witchcraft, Simon. He was not impressed with signs, miracles, and wonders. Dr. Cho passed away here some time ago, had a church of about a million in South Korea. He said, you cannot preach in the Buddhist countries and impress them with signs, miracles, and wonders. He said, I've seen Buddha do the same thing that Christians do, signs, miracles, and wonders. That don't impress them. He said, the same way in Japan, you cannot impress them with signs, miracles, and wonders. The God that they serve does signs, miracles, and wonders. No impression there. But Simon here in Acts, he was one of those kinds. He produced same signs, miracles, and wonders. He was not impressed. But when Peter and John came down, and what did they do? What did they do? They laid their hands on them. Can you imagine laying your hands on a whole city and every one of them getting what? I want you to stay with us now. The same power that lived in Jesus when the woman the issue of blood touched him and it flowed out of him is living in Peter and John. That same anointed power. Because immediately as they reached out, you find this in the book of Acts, but as immediately as they reached out and touched them, that power was inside them, rushed out of them into that whole city that they touched 
and they was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ had the same. I want to see it. How many want to see it? You want to see above the average. You want to see above the normal. Don't want to be normal no more. How many want to be normal? No, I don't want to be normal. Be a fool for Christ. Hallelujah. Samson's mother and daddy was old. They were old. But the angel appeared to them. He said, you're going to have a baby. And you're going to call him Samson. And he's going to have power. And, oh, hallelujah. I mean, he can use you. I don't care how old you are. I tell you, he can use you. Because the visible is subject to the invisible. And the Bible said that Samson was born... He was born for one reason and one reason only. That was to deliver Israel from the Philistines. From the Philistines. And the Bible said, And the Spirit of the Lord began to move Samson and came upon Samson mightily. He reached out and grabbed a lion and just tore it apart like it was a child, a kid goat. Because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him mightily, Brother Michael, and that was just a shadow of things to come. Just a shadow. And then the Bible said he woke up one day. Delilah is a type of the world. She said, oh, sweetheart, honey, baby mine, you've been lying to me. You told me all about where your power lied and said you lied. I, if you really love me and really care for me, I tell you, the devil will sweet talk you. Hey? He'll sweet talk you about the things of this world. And Samson's heart broke. Oh, honey, if you'll just cut off my locks and my hair. His strength wasn't in his hair. The strength was in consecration, dedication, and commitment to God. I'll get back to here in just a minute. And she said, Samson, as she cut his hair, the Philistines up on you, honey. He woke up said, I'll do like I've done before. I'll kill them. I'll take a jawbone of a donkey and I'll kill thousands of them at one time. But he wished himself. He did not know the Spirit of God had left him. How many believe God is good? He's gracious. He's kind. He's grinding in the mill, going around and around, around and around. How many ever feel like you're just going around and around, around and around? You're really not going nowhere, but I'm going to change this, but you're coming out and go straight. Samson reconsecrated and dedicated himself to God. And they carried him out to make sports of him. And he told the Lord, just one last time. I, that's all I'm going to ask is one last time. Let that strength come back on me. He pulled them pillars down and he killed more Philistines in one blow than he did his whole lifetime. I believe God. I, well, I know the scripture tells us in the latter days it's going to be the greater than it was in the former days. If you're here this morning, I don't want you to give up what failures or shortcomings your greatest victory is yet to come. There's going to be a great victory like you've never seen and witnessed before. If you don't grow weary and well done, a great victory. The latter rain is going to be greater. Because of what he was just saying, when Peter sat down to eat, I've never heard anybody really elaborate on why he sat down to eat. He'd been given a word. You're going. Most people will sit down in the midst of a trial and give up. We're fixing to die. He remembered his journey. He remembered the word that had been spoken to him. You will go. He sat down to eat to build his energy. He didn't know when he was going to get his next meal. We need to build our strength. We don't know what's in front of us. We don't know what trials are coming. But we need to build our strength and walk in the confidence of the word that's been given to us. He sat down to eat to build his energy, to endure the trial, the journey 
that was before him. Thank you, Brother James. When they came back in Acts and John 4, they was amazed that Jesus was sitting there talking to this Samaritan woman. He said, guys, <laughs> I got meat to eat that you don't know nothing about. They went into town to buy some food. They was amazed at him. He said, I got meat that you don't know nothing about it. Go back to the book of Numbers, a continuous feast. I mean, you know what? It's God's plan for you to have a continuous feast. It's God's plan for you to eat meat, and that meat is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the bread of life. If you'll eat on him, you'll find out you have strength that you never knew was possible because the visible is subject to the invisible, and that's the Jesus Christ. Now, when Simon saw this power, now I want you to remember now, he could do signs, miracles, and wonders. But when he saw this power that flowed out of these men's hand into those lives, and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance, he pulled out his pocketbook and said, Guys, I got silver and gold here. I'll give you silver and gold if you'll give me that power. Listen, you can't buy it. It's free. You can have all you want. Brother Yoakum used to teach us, you got all the Holy Ghost you want. You got all the power of God you want. If you want more, you would have more. Historians said he later received the Holy Ghost. The power of God is for everybody and is free. Jesus says, you'll do the same works that I do and greater works. I feel condemned and convicted because I don't even see the same works that Jesus did. I have to wrestle with that. That's why I'm preaching the way I am this morning because that spirit was in Peter when he walked down the street one day, just sort of minding his own business. His shadow was there. And they brought the lame, the blind, and the halt. The halt in the Bible means they had no limbs. You say, Brother Billy, I've had Pentecostals tell me, people said, God does not create anymore. They're in error. D.L. Moody walked by one day, a man on the street had no legs. D.L. Moody worked in a shoe store. He told the man, said, go in the shoe store and tell him to give you a pair of shoes. Now, I want you to get this. He got no legs. He goes in there and sits down and said, I come in here. Mr. Moody sent me in here to get a pair of shoes. Now, I want you to get this. What I'm about. Don't limit God. It don't have no limits. He don't have no limits. And he sat down, and they set them shoes in front of him. His legs grew out into those shoes, and he got up and walked out of there. The Bible said, how many believe the Bible? It's the living Word of God. Oh, I wish I could have lived back then. This is a greater day than was back then. Paul and them didn't have that Bible. Peter and them didn't have that Bible. If they wanted to get a Word, they had to go to the temple to get it. They didn't have that Bible, but they had the Word of God in their heart. This, it's the same thing, this Bible. is just like when you read this Bible. It's this Jesus Christ of Nazareth is mentioned in every book in that Bible. It's just like him standing right before of us when you read that word. And the Bible said, and everyone that got under the shadow of his shadow was what? Was what? Healed. What impregnated Mary that Jesus was born? A virgin womb, 15 years of age, when that shadow overshadowed her, and in the darkness of her womb, there was a seed planted, and Jesus came forth. That same power that gave her the pregnancy of a 15-year-old is the same power that lived in Peter and John. And when they walked by, that shadow of Peter's healed. Everybody was in the shadow. Because they had the anointing that Jesus had was in their lives. The 
Y'all better get ready. When you walk in at Walmart one day, your shadow touched somebody. They might have said, Whoo, what was that? You said, you're talking too far out. I tell you, if you believe you're going to heaven, Peggy believes she's going to go up in the rapture. She says, I can't stand the thought of throwing dirt in my face. But I want you to just think about that. The Bible said, and the Spirit shall quicken your mortal body. That's not you in the grave. That had nothing to do with you in the grave. That, that had nothing to do with you in the grave. Because you in the grave, you ain't got no mortal body. We're having cremation more than we've ever seen. They don't have no mortal body. I just feel like, Brother Peel, I might take your place and run this morning. But I want you to know when that trumpet sounds, them ashes been born, burned. The power of God is going to quicken those ashes. And they're going to come out of that grave or wherever they are. If they're scattered, I preach this. Someone from Houston want to know, could I come at Hannah's and pray with them? They wanted to go to Cass and they're going to scatter her husband's ashes all over that land down there. But if he was a died with a Christian, all those ashes are going to come together. Is that right? Oh, church, listen, to, God is going to do great things. Is that right? No, he's already doing great things. He's given us great and mighty things to believe. Them ashes is going to come together. Hallelujah. Bones are going to come to bone to bone. God said, Elisha, Ezekiel said, can them bones live? And what did Ezekiel say? Only you know. He said, okay, do what? How many believe that the Bible teaches all Christians ought to prophesy? That's right. That's in there. Moses said, I would that all of you would prophesy. Paul come along and confirm that about the gifts, but rather that you'd all do what? Prophesy. What did Ezekiel do? He spoke. Can you hear the rattling? It seemed like I just hear a rattling. Can you hear a rattling of the bones coming together? I want to encourage you this morning. I want you to start speaking to your dry places. You're full of the Spirit of God. The power of God is in your life. Speak to the dry places. Speak to the places not fitting, not doing what you want to. Stand up in front of the mirror if you have to. Speak to yourself. Speak to your life. And then he began to speak to the Spirit of the Lord that came in them. Then bones came together. I tell you, just listen, I'd like to be in there. All them bones laying out there, and this hit run over. I went to join one of my bones. Went over. I went to join the Peggy's bone, and she said, "You don't want that bone." <laughs> she, every bone looked for its own bone, own figure, until the first thing in there was a human being there, and the next thing there was the spirit of the Almighty God moving into them, and every one of them got out of that balance, but healed, filled with the power of God. Hallelujah. I love that song, Ken, you sang a miracle coming down my road. I don't sing that no more. I won't sing that because I learned where the miracle is. The miracle is in your house. The chief physician's in your house. The power of God lives inside of you. He's alive, and he's alive forevermore. I want you to expect great and mighty things going to happen in your life. Amen? T.L. Osborne, I think he went to the mission fields when he was 21 or 19, somewhere along that, him and his wife. She was a year younger than he was, and they went to the mission field. And two services, they saw 30 blind people healed just like that, just like that. If God will do it over there, he'll do it right here. If God will use Peter, if God will use Philip, he'll use you and me and everybody else. He wants to use us for the glory of God. God bless you. What are you going to speak? Fill me with the Spirit of God. Make my cup overflow. Make me full of the power of God. Amen. Praise God. God bless you for being here today. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God.